starting the auction off at one dollar for one minute like we always do this is one of our favorite covers and you got it a little bit of that what y'all been looking for right a little bit of that for what y'all been looking for right We have um, on the screen, and this is going to be also available on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. Um, what we're looking at right here right now is a storefront that has a really cool Venom cover right here um, next to a Mary Jane cover. But we're looking at a back issue bin with a sign that says, due to the mm. nature of, specu of the speculators market, they're blaming us, comic fam. <laughs> We reserve the right to check and reprice any and all back issues according to the to current going value. Oh my gosh, what is happening, comic Ooh. book community? Absolutely. Let us know in the comments what you think about that. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, so first, I'm just going to, when I first saw this, my mom brain just like kicked into gear and I was like, Ain't nobody got time for that. Like I, <laughs> my boys can handle the shop and it is fun. But if I had to take those books to the counter and get them priced at the counter, that would be the last straw for my little ones. However, though, it could be worded differently. That one in particular, I think the wording is a little weird, but I totally respect it because I think of the pandemic and the shops that made it through to this point and they could be struggling. I know there's a lot of overhead, a lot that goes into taking in all those collections, bagging and boarding, all the time that goes into them. I also think like it could be worded differently for sure, but what if that shop needs to penny pinch every book that comes in to make it through? I like that. You know, that that's a really good way to look at it because I think my take on this is going to be a little hotter than some would expect. Um, basically, you know, we're talking about a couple different things. And I want to put this perspective um, out there to the community. We're not talking about like, you know, advice to an LCS. Because I think this particular picture, the LCS knows that if a customer is upset about this, they know what's coming. They know what they're going to have to battle, right? They're, they're putting up their fists here and they're deciding that this is something worth their time and the potential complaints that the community is going to have. So what we're looking at this objectively is, uh, as is what if you're a new collector, right? This is comic one one What if you're a brand new person mm -hmm. and you experience this, how should you handle this? Because right now we're seeing in the community and have over the last month, two months, a lot of members posting this and ridiculing it, right? And clearly there's a distaste for it. So what I want to do is provide a little bit of insight on how I look at something like this when I attend a, a, a show or a particular LCS nearby. So when going to a shop and I see something like this, this tells you that this particular choice that the comic book store is making is likely because of what Sammy just described. They don't want to lose out on funds. Now, LCSs struggle to maintain, right? Like in a year, it's like a 90 plus percent failure rate for brand new stores. And those that are surviving this market, mind you, last year, they had to shut down for an entire quarter. So kudos for those who weathered the storm. It's things like yeah. this that you know, says a little bit more about maybe what the store is facing versus what they should or should not be doing. They may be struggling to survive. It's largely a thankless job. So, you know, someone who's working their asses off at a store may not have enough time to price every single book. So the way I look at this, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this, Sammy, is that when I go to a shop that has this type of rule, it doesn't turn me off to the shop at all. What this means is I may not be hunting the way that this um, I may not be hunting the way I do at other shops at this particular um, as this. Oh, my goodness. I may not be hunting the way that I would at another shop when I go into here, th this particular location. What I would do at this location mm -hmm. is assume that, OK, they're going to reprice. So as you just mentioned, as a parent, you probably don't have a whole lot of time to stand in front and have them go through and reprice every single book. So I, I wouldn't go through these bins 
looking to get like a short box of comics to bring up because then you're going to be standing there for upwards of an hour. However, I wouldn't ignore the comics. I would still go through them Mm -hmm. and I would just be a bit more picky about what I bring up and limit what I bring to the front. And then as I'm going through things, I would probably ask them as I go so I can get pricing all along the way. So that's just the first thing that I would try to avoid because it's time. Essentially what you're doing is if you're going through and picking out stuff that the store is going to upcharge because there's an additional value, it means that you're essentially hunting for the store. You're doing the work for them. And that right there is the problem that the community has with this. No, I, yeah, there's a lot that I agree with that now. If I, and I've been in a shop like that without my boys, you know, if I went in with my boys and I saw that I wouldn't be able to shop there. Cause I would just assume that my boys went last at the counter. Now, if I was alone walking to, into that shop and I have been into shops that did price at the counter. And it was one of those situations where they had switched out their inventory. So, and they had all new comics in, right. Um, I basically was very intentional about what I picked up. And then as they priced things, I asked them if we could work a deal on the stack. There you go. See, and that's a tip for any new collectors going in is maybe don't look at this as an immediate turn off. It just is a factor to consider what your hunt is going to look like. So as an example, out here in Washington state, I have a bunch of LCSs that I support and some have signs like this. Some Um, not only price at the front, they don't even have the sign up. And I just know because of experience, those particular stores, I limit what I bring up to the front. I make sure to ask. Another thing that I like to do when I enter a shop is check with the owner or whoever's behind the counter. Are these priced as marked? Are these comic books, you know, the, the price is reflected what I can expect to pay. You can find that out upon entry. That right there is gonna save you a bunch of time. And I don't know about you, Sammy, but- I, you know, you came up here to Washington and you went to how many different stores with me? Like it was me, you, Fire Guy, Ryan? Six. So we went to six different shops and each shop, I had a different opinion about it. Nothing negative. It was just like, hey, this is a great shop, but I get my graphics here. All right. This other shop, uh, I like to hunt here, but they do reprice things at the counter. So let's limit our hunt a little bit. Let's actually make them shorter um, you know, shorter hauls, smaller hauls, and bring those to the front. Um, other shops, you know, I, I can kind of almost compare this to like what Milgi Comics does. Russ Bright, the comic sensei on the show on the trending, um, on the trending ten every week, he bags and boards all of his comic books that he gets for his ongoing reads for all of his monthlies mm-hmm. for his customers. That takes hundreds and hundreds of dollars and a ton oh, of hours of bagging and boarding. Now, can we expect every store in the country to do that? Absolutely not. No way. Some stores barely can make it. They can't even price their books clearly, as you can see on the screen here. So something that Russ does is he bags and boards them, which is why I get my comics through Mill Geek Comics. All the comics that I order monthly, I want them high grade. I'm specking. Maybe I buy more than one. I order more. So because of that, I go through Mill Geek. Now, there's other stores that I probably would support as well, and I would get more monthlies, but they don't bag and board their comics. So I don't go there for that. I go there for something else. Same thing could be applied to how a comic book store is organized. How dirty is it? Is it, is it, is it really tough to hunt? These are all different factors that may be deterrents for some things, but could be an opportunity to just focus your hunt a little bit stricter. A store like this, I would go in there and I would look through, but I wouldn't create a big stack. I want to hear what the community thinks in the chat. Um, Sammy, any last words on this? Yes, I would say too, like one thing I always do, and you probably know this too, Tom, every time I walk in the shop, I always have top of mind the three things I am constantly looking for I can never find. (laughs) Albedo, do you have an Albedo too? Do you have any TMNT books? Do you have any TMNT soft heads? I ask every shop as soon as I walk in, Because if it is an unorganized shop, sometimes I have an organization to the madness and you can just like walk in there, ask them for what you want. If they don't have it, you can hunt or head to the next shop. So that'd be a last quick thing on that. 
There you go. Comic fam, I want to know your thoughts about this conundrum. You know, I see stuff like this and it's like, hey, I get it. I understand why the store has to do it. And there is a level here that we have to also assess. Yeah, it's frustrating. I'm as frustrated as you are when I spend time hunting and the price changes. I just am proactive so that I can prevent that from happening. And so I can make my, my hunt successful, you know, so I'm not disappointed. But let's not kid ourselves. You know, if you're going through a dollar bin and you're saying that you want to support your local comic shop and you're wearing a support comic shop t-shirt and you find an ultimate fallout four in the dollar bin, what are the ethics on that? You know, are right. we upset that that store isn't going to sell that to you for a dollar or are we happy that we can maybe work out a deal because we help that LCS find something that could mm -hmm. pay their internet bill for the month? Oh, absolutely. Agreed. All right.